Hey guys, Joe here from Bees in Your Backyard. So as a field biologist, I've learned that good field equipment can help me do good research. Today, I wanna to talk about Chaco sandals. So I've used Chaco sandals in the field for over 20 years. I even got married in them actually. And I really like Chaco sandals. Well, actually, recently I found a new kind of sandal that I really like, it's called Bedrock Sandals. I'll put a link down in the description. But today I wanna to talk about Chacos. So Chacos are great, they're sturdy sandals, they've get, gotten me to my far away field sites. You can even send them into Chaco and pay for them to put new soles on them or even put new webbing on them. But sometimes I don't have the funding or the patience to send my sandals off. So today I wanna to show you how you can put new webbing in your Chacos in about a half an hour. It's pretty easy, let's get into it. So the process of re-webbing your Chacos is actually pretty straightforward. First, you need your Chacos. Slide those out of the way. You need some thread. I like the thicker thread. So here I have, you'll see if I can get it to get focused. I have this thick gauge thread is for button and crafts. And then I have a needle. I use an X-Acto knife, scissors, a lighter, pliers, because sometimes as you know, your Chaco straps are just really stuck inside the sole. And then for my Chacos, I have Z1s, and I'm using one inch tubular webbing. You can get this at any climbing shop or outdoor shop. If you have the Z2s, it's three quarter inch webbing, which is a little bit harder to find. I also have a measuring tape just so I can make sure my webbing is the exact size of the original webbing. So let's get started. Now, one of the coolest features of Chacos and why I really like Chacos is that they have one long piece of webbing that is connected through, through the sole. So it means you can pull this webbing through and you can micro adjust your Chacos to fit your shoes. This feature also makes it really easy for us to re-web our Chacos. What we're gonna do is we're gonna unpick this seam right here that hooks the colored webbing to the buckle. The way I do this is with an X-Acto knife. So you wanna kinda be careful so you don't cut yourself or cut through the webbing, but basically you're gonna cut along here you're cutting a, across where that, that bar tack has been sewn. So you can see the webbing is off. I slide that out of the buckle. And now we have our webbing, we are ready. The next step is we will take our tubular webbing and we're gonna sew that directly across from the original webbing, like that. So the way I prefer to do this is I just take my needle and thread and I just go back and forth, like so, over and over and over again. Then I tie a little knot in the end of my thread here, cut off the excess, and I am ready to pull that through. So the next step is pretty easy. We pull this old webbing out through the little channels that it comes in, and by doing that, it will feed this new webbing through. So these, there's the dirt that gets it all stuck. So I'm pulling this webbing through. I'm almost at the point when that's going in. This is where the, the breakage point can happen. So I'm gonna try to be pretty cautious when I'm pulling it through. Keep that straight up and down. I'm gonna to try to help feed it through that little hole. You can see, there goes the new webbing into the channel. So now I have my new webbing here. So now I can pull on this a lot harder without worrying about the seam because I can grab the new webbing. So I'm gonna give myself some space here. And now I need to pull this one through. This has been worn halfway through by the sand and the, the use from these sandals. So again, I need to be a little bit cautious here. So I'll grab here, which connects there. And I'll see if I can get this to get started. So again, I'm getting to the point when this is almost through there. So I'm gonna be pretty cautious get it right to there and I'm gonna kinda of help feed it through as I apply pressure. It's now in. So this will be my last channel to pull it through. It's almost there. And 
And there it is. So now I have passed the danger zone. My new nylon webbing is replacing this Chaco polyester webbing. One thing I've noticed is that the nylon webbing, surprisingly, seems to stretch a little bit more than the polyester webbing when it's wet. So you might notice having, you might have to adjust your Chacos a little bit more than you would with the original webbing. But I really like the look of it. And it's pretty easy. So now I'm just gonna pull it through to make sure I have enough webbing. This is gonna get sewn on right here eventually, but I wanna give myself a little bit extra space as far as how much webbing I need. Because I can always trim off the excess. So pull that through here, pull that through one more time here. Okay, that looks like plenty of webbing. Next step, if you want to unpick this seam, again, I'm going to use my X-Acto knife. I want to be careful here because this black webbing is very difficult to replace. It actually goes all the way through underneath the sole. And so that's not something I've ever tried to do myself. You can see that mine is wearing out a little bit here, but that should last me a while still. So I'm going to put the, the tip of my X-Acto knife in between the blue and the black webbing here, slide down and try to just cut those threads that are holding this blue webbing on. I think I've got most of them through. Go back this way. So I've cut this side. These two pieces of webbing, this is the heel strap, they are sewed together right there in the middle underneath this black strap. So I also have to cut this back side of the webbing. Again, I wanna be careful not to cut the black. So now I have that side cut. I can release it by putting my finger in there. And there we go. So now this webbing is loose. I can pull it all through towards the heel of the sandal until my new replacement webbing is in place. So I decided to separate my green webbing from the original webbing. I'm then gonna come over here to where the original webbing hooks on to the heel portion and I'm gonna cut these two straps apart also, so I can measure the correct angle for my green webbing. So you can see currently my green webbing is basically cut perpendicular to the side of the webbing. This blue webbing is at a slight angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna match that angle. You need sharp scissors to cut through this tubular webbing and mine are not very sharp, but we're getting there. So now my webbing matches the original webbing. Like I said, I need to burn this so it doesn't come un, come frayed and come apart. Burn that end and I'll burn that end. It kind of seals this all together. There we go. So now this webbing, webbing is ready, and now I need to work on the heel webbing. So I'm gonna remove this heel strap from the other side. Okay, I think that is mostly through. Let's see if we can get it out. It's like it missed the very top there. Okay. So my heel strap is out. You can see on both sides, they are angled. So I'm gonna take a small piece of webbing. So just so you know, I bought about 10 feet of webbing and that should be enough for both sandals. So I'm gonna take this piece of webbing, match it up here and cut following these same angles. Might be a good idea to mark it, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna do it. So we got one end. Let's 
in the other end. Again, burn it to seal it. Okay. So this now matches our original heel webbing. Next step will be to sew these all in. If you have a machine, sewing machine that is, it's pretty simple. So you wanna make sure that you're inserting this with the uh, long end of the ang angle going in first. This will make it so it's tilting slightly up. So it goes around the top of your ankle. If you did it backwards, like I was trying a second ago, your webbing would be tilting down and your ankle wouldn't stay in there. I mean, your heel wouldn't stay in there. So we tuck that in. I'm just gonna sew this by hand. Remember when you're doing that, if you're doing it by hand, start on this end so the knot is on the outside. Otherwise the knot will rub against your skin and it will irritate you. Then you can take this, sew that together, tuck it in here, and sew those together, and you will have a new set of Chacos, sort of. I just thought I'd stop for a second and show you what I've done so far. So I sewed on that heel strap just by hand. You can see the gray, which is the old thread there. I just left it there. And then I used my dark blue to sew onto that. When I get more time, I might go over it some more times. I would suggest using a thimble. I ended up having to use my pliers to help me pull through pull the needle through all these layers of webbing. So I sewed that heel strap on. On the other side here, I sewed the heel strap to the uh, main strap. Now I will just pull this through till I get it right, right about in the middle, there in the middle. So that's gonna be my new heel strap. Now I'm gonna take some time and sew here and sew here. Uh, again, if you have a machine, that's a pretty quick process. I don't have a machine here in the lab, so I'm using a needle and thread. So the hardest part about sewing this through by hand, I assume with a machine it would be difficult too, is this is a lot of layers of really heavy duty material here. So I can usually get it through with a sharp needle part way, but I'm using a pretty short needle here and it kind of gets difficult to pull it the rest of the way through. So what I've been doing is I'll use my pliers to grab the needle just to pull it through the fabric. And then once it's through, I can usually get it the rest of the way. The thread comes through pretty easy. It's just getting that needle through. I also have a long piece of thread here, so I'm trying to avoid getting it tied up in a knot as I pull it through. So there we go. So, okay, so I got those sewed. They're not the prettiest, but hey, they are functional and they will work for me. So I have the heel strap on. I have the main strap attached here. This is way too much webbing for my likings there. So I'm gonna pull a little bit of that through, trying to get it to right around where I wear it on my feet. So we got that one. This one's also too long. I'm gonna pull this in a little bit. And eventually I'm gonna sew it on there. Before I do that, I'm actually gonna put it on my foot so I can make sure I'm not getting too much excess webbing, but more importantly, making sure I have enough webbing. So I'm not sure how you feel about socks with sandals. I'm generally not a big fan, but it's winter time here in Utah, so I'm wearing socks. So I was about right there. I'm gonna measure this webbing here. This is the one that's gonna attach to this strap that we're gonna eventually wanna be able to pull across our ankles here and down to here. So I'm gonna give myself a couple inches extra and I'm gonna cut it right here. So this can be it's just a straight cut. There's no angle involved. I have my thumb where I measured it when my foot was in there. So I'm cutting that again. This is maybe the most important one. We need to seal this up by burning the ends. Okay, that looks pretty good. So to sew this onto the strap, we slide it through back it up over itself, and then we will sew that down. So when your Chaco is all the way loose, that's how you're gonna get it on and off. I wanna measure this for when I have my Chaco strapped down for when I'm gonna be hiking. So I want it about that tight. So I need to give my room, myself room to sew it, but I'm gonna cut off my extra few inches that I left on there. So to sew this, it's just like we've done it with all the other sewing. I'm just gonna take my needle and thread and do my own style of bar tack back and forth and back and forth to get that nice and tight. 
So when I start this again, I do not want the knot to be right against my skin. So I'm actually gonna tuck it up underneath this first strap so that the knot is in between these two layers and then I can start. This should be easier than sewing through the other webbing because the nylon webbing seems to have a little bit looser weave. So there's the beginning of my sewing job. I can go back and forth and back and forth as much as I want, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I think I'm just gonna stop right there. So let's try it on and see how it works. So we have the before and after. One thing I really like about being able to reweb my Chacos is I can adjust where this buckle sits on my foot. Before, when I tighten these down to where I want them, the buckle's right above my ankle, and when I'm doing long hikes, sometimes it rubs right here and gives me a blister. Because I rewebbed them, I was able to reposition the buckle, so now when I tighten it down, it's more on the side of my foot, where I would rather it be. So, works pretty good. Old and new. So that's it, pretty easy. Old Chacos to new Chacos in about a half an hour, and only at the cost of this webbing, which was less than $10. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and thanks for watching.